chapter 8, Covenanted to Succeed in Life. Sounds familiar. Should be sound, sounds familiar because this is the meaning of my name. Meaning of the name Joseph. Balikan niyo yung ano. Yung chapter 1 actually. <laughs> so, so we've studied yung word succeed, di ba? In chapter 1 also, also yung chalak. And then um, tonight, um, last week, it was God's peace for our success. So ang focus natin is yung peace. So tonight, we will, ano, we will zero in on the covenant. Yan. So Father God, we thank you that you so love us. Um, we pray for a fresh revelation of your love. Open our eyes, Lord, to see the, the depth and the width and the height, Lord, of how deeply and how tenderly and how kind you are towards us. Father, we pray that you'd open our eyes, the heart, uh, open our heart, Lord, to hear your whisper that indeed it is done, it is finished at the cross, and we are now under the new covenant. In Jesus' name, amen. So, under the old covenant mindset, you're always trying to reach God. In simple terms, in one word, the old, the old covenant is religion. It is you do, you have to do something to get a reward. Diba? It doesn't matter whatever religion there is from um, so-called Christianity, even born-again Christians, right? um, Catholics, ganyan, all the way to Muslim and all the way to, to Hare Krishna, it's always contingent on you that you have to do something to please your God in order that he will be happy with you and therefore he will give a reward to you. Uh, even among Christians who doesn't have the understanding um, or the revelation. Revelation means ano, ha, that you understand the, the gospel of grace, um, that it's all about Jesus, right? But if you don't have that, then more or less you're under the old covenant, which is religion. Remember at Mount Sinai, the children of Israel, the children of Israel, um, long before from Adam up to that point in Mount Sinai, they were under grace. But then they said, Lord, just tell us what to do. Just tell us what to do and then we will do it. And that's that's when the law, the Ten Commandments was given. And sadly, under the law, if you're under the old covenant, you break one, you break all. Because the blessings of the Lord under the old covenant is contingent of you following everything. So for example, um, you follow the Ten Commandments, right? Do not kill, do not steal, um, you honor your father and mother, um, you go to, uh, you honor the Sabbath, ganyan. But um, if you break, um, do not covet. <laughs> Everything <laughs> falls like a domino, right? So it's very difficult. Nobody can fulfill the law. Actually, there's only one person who fulfilled the law on you and my behalf. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the end of the law. And if you believe that, <coughs> right, you, you will be free. That hey, It's not contingent on me. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. The new covenant mindset is the is your mind, right? The mind of Christ is that God reached you and he has provided everything for you. In Luke 5, 36 to 39, it says, And no one puts a new wine. New wine is the old covenant. Into old wine, into old wine skins. The problem is actually there is no pure law. There is no also pure grace. We are actually all mixture, even our even our songs. That's why I praise the Lord because, sabi ni Lord, no faith comes. Faith comes because faith is under the new covenant. You don't need faith. Okay, you do not need faith in the old covenant, right? Because it's contingent on you. You do not need the cross under the under the old covenant. Sorry, you do not need the cross. You do not need faith under the old covenant, right? Because it's contingent on you. You don't need Jesus in the old covenant, right? Because everything is contingent on your performance. But under the new covenant, it's it's finished. It is done. The obedience is not your obedience. The obedience is the obedience of Christ. You believe in the obedience of the Lord. So, ito yung, ito yung mixture. When you put when you put new wine skin into old wine skin, yung nagkalabo-labo na, naging halo-halo na. 
That's why it's really very important. It's very clear in in our minds what is the new covenant and the old covenant. Ang ano mga yara pag nagkaroon ng mixture, it's actually deadly. The new wine will burst the wine skins and be spilled, and the wine skins will be ruined. Ano yung wine skin? Actually, it's us. Kasi yung wine skin, it's the vessel, eh, right? But the new wine must be put into into new wine skins. Both are preserved, and no one having drunk old wine immediately desires, for he says the old is better. So. Parang ganun tayo, no? It took time actually for us to really understand what is grace. I'm talking about myself, no? Um, si Ruel, ano eh, went to the uh, straight of Holy of Holies. Pero tayo who uh, who sat under the ministry of mixture. Actually, yung unang experience ako, ah, I can tell my I can tell for myself. My 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 experience um uh the, at the beginning, no, you you really felt the You really heard the gospel of grace because it's all about the love of Jesus for you. But as time went on, there, nagkaroon na ng, oh, you have to do this, you have to serve, etc., etc., for you to be blessed. Actually, yung ano, yung um, yung karma, this is the old covenant. Because you do this, you get this. If you do bad, you will get bad. So the old covenant is you do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. But grace right it's because of what jesus has done on the cross you are blessed you are both given mercy the punishment that you deserve you were not given right and you are given grace the undeserved favor the unmerited favor that you don't deserve you get yun yung new covenant hallelujah and it's not because of your behavior it's not because you are serving every sunday it's not because i'm giving this bible study no it is because of the finished work of jesus christ so to tell god lord you serve naman ako sa you eh. you have to bless me and why is my family like this like this actually you are mixing it hallelujah so now um comes the important part that a you humble Right? You submit. Sabi sa James, iba? Naaral natin previously, two chapters. Submit to God. How do you submit to God? In the light of the new covenant, you submit to God to His righteousness. You submit. You humble yourself under God's righteousness because there's no other righteousness. Hallelujah. The gospel of grace heralds that you are innocent, that you are now righteous, not by what, not by what you do, But, but but by what Christ has done for you. Hallelujah. Yung old covenant, which is religion. If you do this for God, then He will do that for you. But if you don't, He won't. Diba? Parang karma, diba? That, he, that we haven't noticed that our hope has been moved off Christ's piety, moved off from Christ and unto ours. We didn't start out that way, as I've mentioned. Yung new covenant, the new covenant of God's gift of grace was made so that no man or woman would ever have to live a single apart from God self life ever again but could now live an us life yung religion because it's contingent on you it's the i life but the new covenant of God's gift of grace is the us life you you have a joint life with the Lord Jesus with Abba Daddy God with the Holy Spirit a life married to he who is only ever ever good So to preach the law to Christians, actually mixture, is to treat them as single people, not married to God, not connected to a source of holiness that far surpasses the law. For Christ's life was able to justify us in a way the law was never able to do, nor, nor ever can do in Acts 13.39. So, you know, if you read um, um, the epistles of Paul, nakalimutan kong i, ano, i animate, but anyway, if you read the epistles of Paul, starting Romans, kasi yung Acts, si Luke yun eh, you know that every time, no fail, eh, hindi ko na na-paste lahat, as much as I can, pinace ko, is you know what he, what he, uh, what he's, he starts off by greeting the saints like this. In Romans 1.7, the, uh, the, the first epistle of Paul after, uh, after Acts, in NKJV, Tell all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. In the New Passion Translation, may His joyous grace, so the gospel of grace, the new covenant of grace, usher in joy because you are free. It's not contingent on you. There's no performance appraisal. 
ako ay ay ano every time the performance appraisal you have to do or you have to list all the things that you did so that your boss will give you a, a, a raise no that's actually performance appraisal under under grace it's joyous because the performance of jesus christ is more than enough and sabi nga noon may his joy grace and total well-being peace is translated in the passion translation as total well-being flowing from our father and the lord jesus christ rest upon you hallelujah um this one is uh um and then your first corinthians first corinthians 1 3 grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ may joyous grace and endless peace be yours continually puro ano na makikita mo grace to you and peace the same in the passion translation um this one is um um second corinthians okay so makikita mo oops i am i am move i am ayun oops i am move oops ah galatians pala sorry galatians 1 3 ganun din grace to you and peace and then in the passion translation may god's undeserved kindness and total well-being ah so yung well-being no yung peace as as we've learned last um um last week no peace is your awareness that you are in union with god right and it ushers in and it's it also means completeness wholeness your union with god is your well-being hallelujah so gusto ko lang emphasize dito no the gospel the new covenant is the gospel of grace and peace so dalawa no hindi lang grace but also peace hallelujah grace and in, in second peter second peter 1 to yan grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord may grace and perfect peace in the passion Transla translation na cascade over you as you live in the rich knowledge of god and of our lord jesus christ so in the rich knowledge grace and peace comes as we hear and hear and i i love it very much in the uh, mirror bible translation second peter 1 2 to know god's desire that we may know increasingly know grace as his divine influence within us and become fully acquainted with the awareness of our oneness so grace and peace yung peace is translated as awareness of our oneness you are one with God. You're not doing life alone. Even though you walk through the shadow of the valley of death, He is with you. Hallelujah. The way He was always known to us, realized in Jesus our Master. So, Paul defines the gospel with the words grace and peace. In order to distinguish the message of the revelation of the finished work of Christ from the law of Moses. It's a matter of grace versus performance versus work or versus reward mentality. It's a matter of peace. Be, verse, peace meaning oneness, right, with God, your your union with the Lord. Remember, uh, irene peace is being one with God, right? So yung, if God be for us, you know that um, um, in, in English, actually, because when we translate it in English, they were parang, um, there's still a... Um, um uh uh hindi siya 100 sure but you know when you look at the greek it's actually an exclamation point god is for us exclamation point hallelujah that is peace so it's a, the gospel of grace and peace so it's a matter of peace versus separation so your mentality that you are separated from God, that you're walking, that you know you're solving all your problems alone, striving, guilt, condemnation. Grace and peace expresses the sum total of the heart of God towards you and I. This is his heart for you and I. Hallelujah. So questions. How do you think a husband would feel if he discovered after marrying the love of his life that she acted as if they weren't married at all and went out with other men? How would he feel if on questioning her, he found her to be so deeply insecure about his love for her and feeling so unworthy to be loved that in her heart she believed he could not really have been serious in his marriage to her that their marriage was in, in name only. You might think that this is this are ridiculous scenario. No one is going to get married and live as if the mar ma uh, marriage isn't real. You think so? Actually, let's have another look at many of us in the church. How many of us for years have not struggled, have struggled actually to rest in the love of God, to believe that his love for us is the last word on our identity and destiny? How many of us 
have not repeatedly fallen back to believing that there must be something we need to do in order to be or stay worthy of his life, worthy of our union with him. How many of us would confess to living, feeling that he must be a disappointment to God, that he may love us, but he probably doesn't like us? How much of our Christian lives have been spent asking God, begging him what he wants us to do, then worrying that we haven't done what he, want, that he, that what he wanted us to do? Child of God, the gospel of grace and peace as declared by the Apostle Paul in Romans 7.4. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law. You are dead to the law. Sometimes, hindi sometimes, but before, right, we are resurrecting the law. Patay na siya through the body of Christ, right? Because Christ is the end of the law that you may be married to one another. To another. Who are you married to? Christ. To him who was raised from the dead. That we should bear fruit to God. Hallelujah. So, and in Genesis 6.18, the first mention of the word covenant. And this will really bless your heart. You know that he's, the, the new covenant was, was first mentioned during the, during the uh, story of Noah. When he was commissioned by the Lord to, um, to build the ark. You know that the new covenant not only concerns you, but it's it concerns, it covers your entire family. But I will establish my covenant with you. And you shall go into the ark. Who is the ark? In typology, the ark is the Lord Jesus, right? You, your sons, your wife, and your son's wives with you. Hanggang sa mga in mo. Right? The covenant is not only for you, but for your entire our family. Hallelujah. Tingnan natin. Ano? Because the covenant is the covenant of Jesus Christ. There it goes again. A left thumb. Hallelujah. So, yung covenant, berit in Hebrew, is the word for pledge or an alliance. God has pledged himself to you and to me. He has forged an alliance to you and to me. It's a political term where two parties come together and agree to abide by certain terms. It comes from the Semitic root word bara, which means to bind, to be bounded, to cut, and to break bread. That's why the Lord, you know, is so good because he said, do this in, do this as often, right? Because he wants us to be reminded that, hey, I am in covenant with you and I will not break my covenant. Hallelujah. The idea of cutting is cutting of bread. In ancient times, when chieftains sought to form a treaty, they would often have a meal together. A meal together. The, 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 the communion, right? So, it's your, the, when you partake of the communion, it's your, it's your, it's your wedding meal. Hallelujah. First, 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that he might become the righteousness of God in him. Child of God, God looks at you as innocent. God looks at you as clean. God looks at you as righteous. Hallelujah. God entered into a covenant with himself. Not, not with you. Huh? The, the, the parties actually is God, the Father, and God, the Son. God entered a covenant with himself in Christ Jesus. But he, he, what we were represented because it was cut with a covenant with uh, uh, Emmanuel who, was, who became a human being, right? Mankind fully represented in the man Jesus Christ swore by himself and entered into an eternal covenant with himself on humanity's behalf. The covenant was cut between God the Father and Jesus Christ at the cross. And the, bene be, uh, the beneficiary is you and I. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why you can say, that's why the Lord said in Luke 15, My son, you're always with me. And everything that I have, everything the Father has, it's yours. Hallelujah, Christ. And he brought an end to all dispute. There is no more dispute, right? That you are like this, that you're not doing this, that you are etc. etc. There's no more dispute. Because this dispute encourages separation, right? Because he has declared us already innocent. With greatest confidence, you can declare that God has given proof of this judgment. Ano yung judgment? That you've been made 
the righteousness of God in Christ. There's no more, there's no more judgment as in judgment as in you're going to hell or you're going to be punished. No more. Your judgment is you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. And the proof is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection is God's eternal testimony and God's eternal receipt for you. God's great demonstration of love at the cross. Hallelujah. So the new covenant, you are signed, sealed, and delivered in Ephesians 1, 13 to 14, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also that you replied, you were sealed. You know that you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of its glory. Actually, this translation is parang in the future pa. But actually, when, when you study the Greek of this, it is actually now. That you're not going to enjoy the, the benefits of your covenant in the by and by. No. Heaven is now. You are heaven walking on earth. So, heaven is not some distant goal for us after we die. But God has lavished upon us every spiritual blessing, which includes healing and wholeness, right? That is in the heavenly places. We have it all now in this life. The eternal inheritance has always been ours. He opens up Ephesians telling us what God has always known to be true about us. It's too good to be true, but it's true. But that's the very meaning of the word gospel. It's really good news. Too good to be true. We cannot grasp it with our natural understanding. Because if you can grasp it with their natural understanding, it's not the gospel. That's why we are given the Holy Spirit for us to understand. Even the gift of faith, even the gift of understanding is supplied to you and us. Another point, the new covenant is the mentality of supply. The old covenant is the mentality of demand. It demands something from you. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2.14 that the natural man cannot accept the things of the Spirit because they are foolishness to him. And he is unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. In other words, a performance-based mindset, natural man cannot understand the language of grace. Law and grace cannot coexist in our thinking. Being sealed signifies four results. Number one, it's a finished transaction. So our mentality should be it's, a, it's, it's done, it's finished. It was a mark of ownership. Who owns you now? You're married to Christ. How? It was a bond of security. All the promises of Christ are in him. Yes and amen. It was an imprint of authenticity or identity. Your identity now is wrapped up in Christ. Hallelujah. The gospel declares that the union he offers us is based entirely, entirely, not on your obedience, definitely, not on my obedience, but in Christ's obedience at the cross. Christ's obedience in life. In Romans 5.19, that is, I, that, are, that is our identity. We are hidden in him. Religion, the old covenant. Any system that promises you the blessing of God through what you do apart from God leaves you like the prodigal son. In a far country, dressed in self-righteousness. May look good to other men, but are filthy rags compared to the righteousness of God. And then you look it up in 64.6. If you're trying to earn your righteousness, if you're trying... To earn points with God, you know, God looks at those as pasador, filthy rags, menstrual clothing. The righteousness that we inherited by virtue of our new birth, our sonship in Christ, the righteousness that we receive as a gift is a far superior righteousness than anything we can achieve on our own. The turning point in the prodigal son's life was when he remembered, when he had a metanoia revelation that the life of a son in his father's house was of a far superior quality than that of a self-made man. Hallelujah. So remember this. Remember this. So remember uh, the gospel of grace and peace, especially peace, ushers in your union with Christ. You're dovetailed. You're dovetailed. It's dip, yung, yung definition, you know, kasi I was so blessed actually, uh, repeating it again on Saturday and Sunday. The meaning, right, of dovetailed, it's used primarily for carpentry. It's when you, 
you are dovetailed to the Lord. Difficult to pull, difficult to pull the joint apart and virtually impossible when glue is added. You know who is the glue? It's the Lord Jesus Christ, right? It is the glue to 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 everything in our lives. He holds things he he by him and in him everything is held together. Noted for its resistance to being pulled apart, also known as tensile strength. So, yung dovetail, no, it's to unite, to be united, or, or uh, to be united, uh, to be joined, to combine together well, to interweave so that they can be, so that uh, they can be run more or less simultaneously, to be combined or fit well together. This is you, child of God. You're dovetailed to God. You're in union with Him. Just like this. You know, pag nag, may ganyan pala, no? It's very difficult to, ano, it's very difficult to separate. Instead of doing like this. Ah! What it says in the mere, passion trans, mere Bible translation, get hold of your union to Christ. Believe in the new nature within you. That spiritual life which you have from Christ, that life which has died and been raised again, a man's acts are always in accordance with this idea of his idea of his estate. I actually hindi ito mere translation. It's a commentary, but it's so good. A king acts like a king. Otherwise, we say that man has forgotten his kingship. But if a man is is conscious of being a king, if you are conscious that you've been married to the Lord, then you you will behave like that. You will behave like a king. And and so I cannot live the life of a true believer unless I am filled. With the consciousness of this very day, of this every day. As long as I do not know it, I cannot act according to it. Though it be in me, know yourselves as dead indeed unto sin. Hallelujah. And you know, um, this is the opening line actually from uh, the Saturday recording and which actually tremendously had an impact with me. You watch the, uh, the mother... Um, which was released last Friday in Netflix. Somewhere along the the story, kasi ano siya eh, um, it's a, a story of separation between the mother and the and the daughter due to bad people. Kasi yung, yung father ng bata is the mafia. So they were separated for a time, but then um, uh, J-Lo was um, looking after her her daughter from a distance. Anyway, it came to a point that um, um, they, were, they were reunited for... A bad reason, ganyan. Because um, um, si J-Lo, she has to protect the child. So, nangyari na nga ang dapat, mang, ang, nangyari na nga ang dapat mangyari, mag-reunite sila. And then, started the drama. The daughter asked the asked the mother, uh, asked, uh, asked Jennifer Lopez, why did you leave me, etc., etc., ganyan. Why did you uh, uh, leave me alone and had me, had me, ano, had me um, uh, adopted, ganyan. And then, so so many questions, so many questions. Why did you abandon me? You know what the what um the mother said. She, in this case, si Jelo. Sabi niya ganyan. I am here. Whatever the question, that is the answer. I was so impacted by this because, oh, Lord, even in Netflix, you're talking to me, no? <laughs> so whatever your question is, whatever your question, especially when you are looking at a contradiction in your life, you're looking at a very dark scenario in your life the lord is saying whatever the question the answer is i am here the answer is the gospel of peace the answer is the gospel of your union with christ hallelujah that's why the lord wants us to have an awareness balik tayo dun sa ano kanina no i'm so blessed by this sabi niya ganun and i cannot live the life of a true believer unless i am filled with a consciousness of this every day and this was pronounced by uh, Father God to Abraham in Genesis 17.1. The sign of his covenant is his presence in you. I am God Almighty. Live in constant awareness. Ano yung awareness? In other, in other words, your consciousness mo, right? Your understanding mo that he's always with you. That is the gospel of grace. That is the gospel of peace. So if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants. Heirs according to the promise. And mind you, Abraham is the heir to the cosmos, heir to the world. Hallelujah! And the best way to re be reminded of this, to have a great awareness and consciousness, and is when you partake of the Holy Communion. 
and what the Lord is saying to us actually, if you're hearing, if you're seeing contradiction, don't let bad news interrupt your hearing. In Luke 8, 49, Jesus, our Lord Jesus was still speaking to the woman. He healed from 12 years long condition when someone arrived to tell the ruler of the synagogue that his daughter, because he was walking with Jairus at this point, right? Towards um, towards Jairus' house because the daughter was dying. But then um, towards going to the house of Jairus, then enters the, the woman with an issue of blood in 12-year-long condition. And then um, um, the people said, do not bother the teacher anymore. Your daughter has died. Ah, ano sinasabi ni Lord dito? Don't let bad news interrupt your hearing. You know, in Luke 8.50, Jesus, overhearing the conversation, said to the ruler, you have no need to be disturbed by this news. Even if you are seeing contradiction and darkness in your life, what the gospel of grace and peace is saying that it is finished. It is done. Your wholeness is done and paid for, including your family. You know, you have no need to be disturbed by this news. Remain in this place of seamless persuasion and she shall be completely restored. And in seamless persuasion, seamless persuasion that hey, God is for you. God is for me. It's an exclamation point. Hallelujah. And lastly, right? No other foundation that anyone can lay, that anyone can lay for you to be successful. That foundation is the new covenant. Without a proper, proper foundation, a building will remain unstable because all its weight is on the wrong place. Especially when the storm comes, right? Without a proper foundation, a Christian will remain unstable because all their weight is on the wrong place. If Christian, if Christ and his work is not laid as the foundation of our new life, if Christ and his finished work is not laid as the foundation of our new life, if Christ and, his, and, and the new covenant is not the foundation of our new life, we will continue to put far too much weight on our own performance or obedience as a foundation of our lives. Of course, our obedience to God's direction is important. But what I want to show you this tonight, <laughs> tonight is that our obedience is not the foundation of our new life in Christ. In 1 Corinthians 10. Don't let any preacher try, including yourself, and lay your obedience as the foundation for your new life in Christ. That's why it's live the let go life. Because Christ has done everything. Hallelujah. So... What does it mean by covenanted to succeed in life? It's wearing the robe of his righteousness. You know the ketonet pasim, di ba? Several times in the natin to. This is the robe of the firstborn. Who is the firstborn? The one who first resurrected from the dead. It's the Lord Jesus, right? And now we are clothed with his righteousness. It's covenanted to succeed in life. Ano yung ibig, ano yung uh, uh, san yan ng galing sa story, uh, san sang storya ng galing in the story of Joseph actually. Joseph's name actually, the name of Yahweh, the ni Aleph tab is imprinted in the name of Joseph. And his name shall be called Joseph, Aleph tab. You know what it means? Ito ha, yung yung mga letters ni Joseph, Yod, di ba? It 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 um it it means uh one of the meanings is the finished work. Sec, uh, uh, bab. It means secured because it looks like a nail. Samek. It looks like a ring, an ending, an ending forever. And then um, a nun. It 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 uh, it denotes you are heir to the throne. What does it mean? What does it mean to be covenanted to succeed in life? Covenanted in the new covenant. Huh? So what does it mean? You're heir to the throne, forever secured through the finished work, not only you, but your entire family. Hallelujah, because it's all done in Christ. It's all done in Christ. In Ephesians 1, 13 in, to 14 in the mirror translation, now you have discovered yourself to be equally included in him, having witnessed the unveiled logic of God. What exciting news. Your salvation is publicly announced, consistent with the promise of God. The Holy Spirit gives guarantee to the fact of your faith, like the stamp of a signet ring. You know that um, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is given to you as a as an engagement ring. 
you're sealed by the Holy Spirit. Like the stamp of a signet ring that certifies a document. You are certified. You are signed, sealed, and delivered. You are in Him. The Holy Spirit is our tangible link to the inheritance that was ransomed and preserved for us. God's glorious plan for mankind is the theme of our celebration. It's it's the theme of our, of our thanksgiving. It's the theme of our everyday life. So, child of child of God, bride of Christ, the queen bride of Christ. No more labor, no more toiling. It's all done in Christ. You are covenanted to succeed in life. So, I leave you with this. It's so beautiful in Ephesians 2:10 in the Mirror Bible translation. It's God's poem to you. You are the expression of the greatest idea that ever was. God imagine you. Every invention begins with an original thought. You're God's original thought. You are the initiative of Elohim, the result of their creative inspiration, their intimate design and love dream. The first word in the Bible is Bereshit, diba? the Berosh, which means yung B means in and Rosh means head. Thus, in the head. You are in the head because you are the body. We are the body. You are God's idea. You are a work of art. His bride, his masterpiece. And that, my dear friends, is chapter 8. Praise the Lord.